last-minute dive. It's very messy out there. The French, look at that. They're flying high. They're healing over. We should be clear of France if they tack at the moment. Copy. You're always thinking about the timing, you know, when you're delivering a piece of information. You know, is Ben really zoned in on a boat-on-boat -boat situation? So whatever I say at that point is probably not going to go in and because his head's somewhere else. If it's something that really does need to go in, then I need to really change the tone of my voice to make sure it kind of breaks through. 20 seconds. Coffee. Pressure's good, though. Coffee. And then the language is making sure that you can say quite a lot of information in a really succinct way that means he'll understand straight away what it is I'm trying to get across to him. Good games to us on the rest of the Clear ahead. Wow, Team Australia are leading, but they're off the foils. Come on! And the British overtake them. Emirates GBR's on the last leg of the race. What a result after a fantastic team performance. We've done a nice tack bellway manoeuvre at the gate, and then we were looking to jibe. And then someone said, oh, have you seen Canada? Canada. And I had to make a quick adjustment to the course of the boat, which then flicked someone off balance. Someone's oh. overboard, Todd. Someone's overboard. Oh, my word. That looks like the fairing's broken. Yep. They're trying to reach through. Actually, I saw somebody go overboard. First thing I thought was, oh, please not hurt, please not hurt. Her. With all high adrenaline sport, there is risk. Um, and that's Hannah's decision as to you know, whether she does that or not. He was dangling like a rag doll on the end of his tether. It looked like he was unconscious. There was a moment there where it looked like we were going to have to cut his tether or try and spike his tether. At that point, I was getting ready to try and tell the other boats coming, you know, that there was a man in the water, because, you know, that would just be horrendous if, if we got run over by one of these boats at the speed they're going. He's a tough guy, seriously tough guy, and the first thing he said was, right, let's get to the finish line. Is he all right? Yep. Wanted to salvage as much points as possible, so didn't have to quite apologise as much. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, the first thing I thought about was just get back on the handles and do what you need to do and carry on with your job. Here we go, last manoeuvre before the finish line. Australia and... Oh, no, both holes in the water for Australia. What? France grabs first place. And the win will go the way of the French. Content de la Pierre pulls a rabbit out of his hat. Oh, that win has to hurt, Sir Ben Ainsley. They had the race in the bag, and then one of the grinders went overboard, and that was it. But they've managed to salvage a sixth. What an unbelievable effort from Matt Gottrell. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's how you win a gold medal in rowing, right? You've got to be tough. Last race of the day, and France wins three out of three. Emirates GBR crosses the finish line second. A good rebound after race one drama. <laughs> oh, what a performance from the young Frenchman, Contant de la Pierre. I mean, they won in Cadiz, they were second in Dubai, but right now they're leading the fleet. They're ahead of Sir Ben Ainsley, and this French team are really showing themselves as a firm favourite to make that San Francisco final. Winning is good, but he's winning three times in a row. Only the champions are doing that, and that's what I want to build. I want to build champions not just a one-time winner. Welcome to the ITM New Zealand Sail Grand Prix in Christchurch. It's the penultimate Grand Prix of this season, so it is all to play for. The wind is looking absolutely fantastic, and we have a grandstand crowd here in Littleton Harbour. Second day of racing here in Christchurch. We're about to start race five. Well, now all eyes are going to look towards San Francisco and the grand final. Ben is currently sitting two points behind the French. Yes, he needs to do great, but ideally he'd also like to see the French doing really badly. Okay. Underneath, France. Underneath. Yep. Yep. 
An opportunity presented itself in the start where we were able to get underneath France. Here we go, Ainsley heading back towards the line. He's foiling fast, he's got the French in his sights. He's coming in, he's gonna to look to push the French here. If he can get overlapped, he's got the right of way. France must keep clear. France have got to turn away to the right. Expect a protest from Ainsley. Oh, that could really hurt the French. Ainsley turns away. There's gonna be a penalty surely for France. That's no penalty, no penalty for me. Oh, the umpires have rejected Ben's protest. He's at the back of the pack. Look at the other boats fly away. He's got a bit of work to do to get a good result from here. That is really, really bad. Actually, we were on the back foot. It wasn't a great situation for us, but we did a good job as a team again to battle through. Oh, no, I'd rather see them at the front as well. I know, I know. At Emirates GBR, they won't be making the final here in Christchurch, but they finished the Grand Prix one point ahead of France. All right, at least the French are behind. At least the French are behind. We can do quite enough to get ourselves into the final podium race, which was frustrating, but, you know, in the overalls, to gain a point on France means it's quite significant because it means whoever beats who in San Francisco will most likely get into that grand final. One minute before the start of the final here in Christchurch, Australia has already booked their ticket for the San Francisco Grand Final. New Zealand is pretty much there too. Well, we can see Contan de Lapierre and Sir Ben Ainsley. They're paying full attention from the sidelines. Three seconds to go. Watch for the line to turn white. Canada is leading the race. We are approaching gate two. Canada is pushing Tom Slingsby. When Tom decides to switch sides to fight the final alongside the Kiwis, Canada's in the lead. Second and third are New Zealand and Australia. Two teams that most certainly will be in San Francisco's grand final. Two superpowers of world sailing right now, measuring up against each other. Every time you end the final, it's a great opportunity to try and hone your skills. Uh, is obviously at the end of the day, that's going to be how you, the whole thing's decided. Ben and Contan, they're sat on the side lounge, but right now I guarantee you that they're thinking that Canadian boat is us in a few weeks' time. Now, right now there's a fight at the front of the fleet. Australia versus New Zealand, it's getting hyped up. Slingsby versus Burling, and, you know, there's heaps of hype, but you know, there is a third boat that's going to make this final. And I just can't help but think if the third boat makes the final, you know, the underdog might sneak through and, and steal a win. Last gate before the finish line, massive sprint from Canada on this last leg. What an outstanding race to beat the two most informed teams in the league. Wow, Canada, they were clearly not the favourites. And now, Phil Robertson crosses the finish line for Canada's first ever victory in Sail GP. I think Canada's written the roadmap for Contano Ben to finish the season, winning the $1 million race. I'm super stoked to... Uh do it in New Zealand as well is extra special. Have my family and, and good friends there as well is even better still. My first regatta win since the Ontario High School Championship. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are the overall standings before San Francisco. And to me, the five feet races there are going to be a straight fight between Ben and Quentin, the master against the rookie. Quentin, you know, one day there comes a time where you've got to try beat your heroes. You can't put them on a pedestal anymore. You've got to respect them, but you've got to go in with everything you possibly have. And, and, and that's what's going to happen in San Francisco. Okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, super cool. Great yeah. opportunity for you. Yeah. Don't forget, Ben Ensley has been a sort of hero for, for Quentin for many, many years. He look at him, he look at his race, the way he was sailing. First time he came in Cadiz, he looked at Ben. Ben came, say hi to him, and I could see the star in his eyes when he saw Ben. And now he's competing against him, and with a lot of respect. I think Quentin is the most impressive sailor in in Sail GP right now, in terms of coming into a new team that was on a back foot massively, turning things around. You know, in terms of showing the maturity to lead the team and the performance on the water. Uh, I, yeah, I stand by what I said. I think it's one of the most impressive things I've seen in sailing. It's going to be a bit of a dogfight between ourselves and the French. You know, it's going to be very exciting to see who gets through to that grand final.
Uh, that was okay. Yeah, the um, the start's quite hard. Yeah. But being on the water is is the, one of the first times, I guess, that I've felt like I can completely let go of being a mum for those few hours. And yeah, it's it's really nice, but at the same time, it, you do uh, you desperately miss them. As soon as you come back in, I feel like. God, I've missed you so much, um, which is mad because it's literally like five hours. Um. <laughs> I do feel like if Ben does make the final, you're going to have Pete and Tom with a rival that's been developing all year, and I just can't help but think Ben's going to, you know, slide in and, and steal a victory that has looked really unlikely all season. People ask me, who would you prefer in the final? Who'd you prefer to race? And I naturally say, oh, look, I think we'd prefer France in there. You've got the young guy who doesn't have the experience compared to Ben Ainsley, who's performing under pressure a lot of times. But I actually don't know, because Quinton has come out and blitzed us in multiple events, and he's shown that when he's on, he's on. I just keep looking at the, the performance data, and it doesn't lie. You know, Ben, they are without question one of the fastest boats in a straight line. The meters lost per maneuver, they're always, you know, losing the least. We're a very proud maritime nation. Success in sailing, it's really important to us. You know, going way back to the history of, of sailing in Britain. And Sail GP is the new frontier in sailing, so it's a big responsibility for us to lead the way to try and be the top team, the most successful team in Sail GP, and to get consistency to keep that going and keep going and keep going. This is our chance to set those foundations for the long term, and that's what we're going to try and do.